So. Here it's gone too, it doesn't mark like that now. One, eight, zero, four, fifty-five, three, two, eight, five. Whatever he says it goes. What are we doing? Let him tell you though. Uh A is find the Y intercept. One of those things, if you know how to do it, it's easy. But you just gotta have to know how to do it. If you know, so A is find the y-intercept of the function. B is find the zeros of the function. We have done B a lot. So, um, I should have put f of x equals on the front of this. I kind of forgot because it's not important, but how do we find the y-intercept? Right, you make the x value 0, so all you do is you put 0 in for x. 2 times 0 squared minus 5 times 0 minus 3 is negative 3. If you did not know that, you need to write a note to, help, to explain it to yourself. If you just write down 0, negative 3, probably not going to help at all. Is it because it's the last one? No, it's because when you put in 0 for x, what comes out is negative 3. Because everything else is 0. Right. If this is 0, this is 0. If this is 0, this is 0. The y-intercept always has an x value of 0. So I put in 0 for x. Okay, what does it mean to find the zeros of the function? How do we make this equal to 0? There's two ways to do this. Well, kind of three, but the third way is not efficient at all. Factoring or quadratic formula. Now, technically, you could say, what's the factors of this over factors of that? That's not going to... If it's just a quadratic, x squared, you don't want to do that. You just want to factor or use quadratic formula. If you're not good at factoring, do that. Did you guys factor it? Yes, 2x minus 3. What goes into 2x squared? What goes into negative 3? Negative 3 and positive 1. And when you do outside, inside, It adds up to negative five x. That's how you know it's right. Outside, inside of the foil adds up to negative five x. So what x values make that equal to zero? Negative one half and positive three. Negative one half, positive three. All right, I'm gonna erase all that. Guys done?
Okay. Um, ooh. Not bottom. Probably should answer B first on this one. I would. What does the minus 3, x minus 3, what does the minus 3 do to the graph? Yeah, so over to the right. Right 3, what does the minus 1 out here do? Uh, down, one. down 1. So if the graph moves right 3 and down 1, where's the vertex? 3, negative 1. Okay, you guys remember what the axis of symmetry was? It's a line that goes right down the middle of the parabola. And it always said x equals what? Yeah, it matches the x coordinate of the vertex. Okay, how did we find the y intercept on the last problem? We put in 0 for x. If I put in 0 for x, 0 minus 3, negative 3 squared, positive 9 times 2, minus 1, 17. So this one's a little bit harder to find the y intercept. So I actually have to do some work. Paper. Are you guys done with this one? Yeah. Let's see if okay. I have to go to the video. I don't I can't wait too long because I've got to make sure I get through all this. It's, it's all recording though. All right, so I just gotta make up a parabola here. Let's do, uh, I'll just start here and do it like this. So the question is, Is that going through zero to zero? Yeah, yes. it doesn't really matter for the question. Though. same thing. Axis of symmetry vertex uh, you probably should do the vertex first and then I guess that's all we listed for that one. Is it like max or minimum point? No. Uh, where's the vertex? Negative one, negative one. Why so negative? What is the axis of symmetry? Negative one. It's this vertical line right down the middle. Zero. It's x equals negative, negative one. of symmetry is a line. So, yeah, to describe a vertical line, say x equals. All right. Uh, number four is graph number two. I think we call it f of x, didn't we? Should I pass out graph? You guys want graph paper? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
All right, so going back to number two, um, I would start with the vertex. I kind of forgot what I put on number two. What was number two? Okay, the vertex is at three, negative one. some good x values to plug in. Two, two and one. I think if you plug in two, you should get one. Have you guys tried that yet? A little bit steep. All right, I think we're done with the uh, that was yes. on to page two. Oh, I lied. One more. Another graph. Are you guys done with that? Yes. Okay, number five says graph the inequality. last one. Um, how do we start these? Like, how do I find the vertex on this? Negative V over 2A will help me find the vertex. If you, can, if you don't remember that, you can kind of just plug in some random X values Zero. and hope to figure out, hope to figure out uh, what it was. So negative B would be negative 4, 2 times A would be 2 times 2 is 4, so negative 1 is like the x coordinate of the vertex. So how do I find the y coordinate that goes with it? Plug negative 1 back in. That would be 2 minus 4 minus 3, uh, negative 5. And choose a couple other x values close to that. So 
negative 1, negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0, negative 3, 1, 3. Alright, should the parabola be solid or dashed? Dash, because it's greater than, not greater than, or equal to. Should we shade above or below? Above. Greater than is above. So in this case, above would be inside the parabola. Okay, back to this. Number, what number is this? Six? Okay, this is just divide, but this is a much easier division problem. How do we divide with when it's like this? Just dividing by one term. Basically distributive property. Divide each of these by 4AB. Everybody's favorite, synthetic division. Okay, so on number six, let me try to do this quickly. You guys remember all this stuff, right? So eight divided by four is two. How do we do it? divide A3 divided by A? Subtract the exponents. In this case, the exponents, since they're invisible, are one. So three minus one is a2. B2 divided by B is B. Plus, what is 12 divided by 4? 3. A2 divided by A, A. B divided by B cancels out. Minus, what's 16 divided by 4? AB divided by AB cancels out. That's it. 
Okay, long division. I didn't leave any room here. That was a mistake. Okay, you do 3x cubed divided by x is 3x squared. You do 3x squared times those. And then you subtract the bottom line. That minus that. When you minus minus becomes a plus. 2 plus 6 is 8x squared. Bring down the next term. Start over. What's 8x squared divided by x? 8x. 8x times this stuff. Okay. Then, am I going too fast? Yes. Too late. We've already learned it. I'm not going to reteach it again and again and again and again. we got to speed up. So, we're going to minus this one. And start over. 23x divided by x is 23, oh boy. And then 23 times this. Subtract the bottom line. Negative 4 plus 46 is 42. The remainder I had you guys put over the divisor. So that's it. You want the rest of it? Or to look at it more slowly, you're gonna to have to watch the video. Long division. Okay, how do I set up synthetic division? What goes in the box over here? Negative three. Negative three. What goes across the top? Two, negative three, four, negative seven. Something is wrong. Okay, it's missing an x squared term, so it needs a zero. Was it a negative seven? Yeah, it was. Okay, add down, multiply up. We've done this so many times. Oh, this is gonna be big and ugly. Well, I just made these numbers up, so. Yeah, Let's see. No. 210 plus 21, 231, I think. Hopefully, I'm getting this right. Minus 7 is 224. Okay. The answer this is the remainder, the last thing. This is the constant. This is the x term, x squared, x cubed. So the answer is 2x cubed. Minus 9x squared. Over the divisor. I expect you guys to get that one right. We've done it so many times. All right. Um... Rational root theorem. You guys remember what rational root theorem is? We use this quite a bit too. Uh, plus or minus, yeah, most of you don't recognize it by name, even though I say it every time. Um, it's This is where 
We don't know what an answer is. Like it's not a quadratic, so we can't factor it. So we said the possible answers are factors of seven over factors of two. Factors of seven over factors of two. What are the factors of seven? What are the factors of two? So it could be one over one or seven over one. And it could be positive or negative, by the way. Or it could be one over two or seven over two. All right, this one is not asking for the answer, so you, you can stop there. But if we wanted the answer, what would we do? Plug them in and start, start plugging them in. Actually, let's save that one for last. I want to do the easy ones first. <coughs> so, I guess this will be 10. Um, so the question are, state degree leading COFA. State degree leading coefficient Hopefully this, I kind of feel like this should be an easy one. I, it, it should be. What is the degree of this polynomial? Three. Three. What is the leading coefficient? One. One, the number out in front. What is the end behavior going to be? What does x cubed look like? Down. Looks like this. Odd degrees go from down to up if it's positive in front. Or if it's negative on front, it goes from up to down. So this would be down up. Okay, on B, what is the degree? Four. Four. What is the leading coefficient? Negative three. Negative three. Okay. What did a fourth degree look like? W. W. What if it's a negative leading coefficient? M. M. So the end behavior is down, down, down. down. Save the best for last. Okay, how do I find possible answers for this thing? It's too big to factor. Factors of 20 over factors of 1, like on number 9. Factors of 20, there's kind of a lot, but usually your answers are going to be like one of these first four things, right? They, they don't usually make you get to that point. So, over factors of 1 is just 1. So it's Basically, it's just plus or minus all these things are my possible answers. 
And really, we only need to find one that works. So if we get lucky, it might be positive one. Does positive one work? One plus no. three is four. Nope. Does negative one work? Negative one plus three is two plus 14. Two doesn't work. Is 16. No. Does negative two work? Negative eight. Four doesn't work. Plus 12 is four. Said positive two doesn't work. Yeah, I'm plugging in all the positives right now. Negative four. Negative five works. Negative five. Ooh, that's kind of far out. Okay, negative five works. So what we do is basically synthetic division with negative five. You just plug stuff in, try to make it equal zero. Negative five is going to work. So, add down, multiply up. Okay, negative five is an answer. How do I find the last two answers? Use the leftover from uh, the synthetic division. Okay, this, a lot of times it factors, but does this factor? No. no. So, what do we have to do if it doesn't factor? Quadratic. Another quadratic formula. So, negative, these are my coefficients. Negative B is positive 2. Study that some, see how much you can get. You look at your notes, it's possible. Yes. 